All right. So does anybody has anybody heard that we have a new president? <laughs> That's crazy. The past year's been crazy with this political stuff going on. Um, I kind of keep up with it a lot because I, 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 my wife and I, she, we, we go back and forth with stuff. Luckily, we're kind of on the same page. Um, so uh, first, I want to mention that, that uh, we're, you know, the, the, there really is a devil out there because uh, since, since Doug has uh, forced me, I mean, asked me to uh, come up here and talk, um, there's, uh, I've been getting all these, all these uh, things in my head like, you can't do that, you're not, you're not worthy, you're, you're, uh, um, your, your story is boring, your, your, uh, your testimony is, you know, it's not that good. So it, there really is a devil out there. I mean, up to, the, to just a few minutes ago. Um, with that, get started here. Um, but uh, like I, I was kind of going to mention that uh, when Doug asked me to come up, he um, he said he said, "Hey, you know, you got to step out, be bold, and and uh, get out of your comfort zone." Well, I, I guarantee you, this is way out of my comfort zone, and I'm sure it, it is for a lot of guys that come up here. It's out of the, way out of their comfort zone. Um, so, with that. Uh, um, I'll get started. Um, I'm 58 years old. I uh, was um, I'm married, and actually I'm kind of a newlywed. I've been married for three years, um, uh, and I have been married before, and we'll hear about that a little bit. Um, happily married, uh, we uh, um, I got two kids. One's 30, one's 32, uh, and and I have uh, my wife's got two kids as well. They're 26 and 28. Um, and my kids, uh, one of my kids is, goes to the church, um, and so I'm happy for that. The other one is uh, um, coming along, but he's in, he's in, a, he's in another world. He's in, the <clears throat> in that rock and roll world, so I hope, uh, hopefully he'll, he'll come, come, uh, come to Christ here pretty soon. But I think he is, but we'll see. Um, So I've, uh, I was a fireman for 32 years. I, I retired about three years ago. Um, and uh, I, uh, um, I had a fire, fireman, I, uh, kids fireman. And then, uh, excuse me, I'm, 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 I got to get my thoughts together here. So that's my life right now. Um, but let me let me get started. When I, from about one to five years old, I lived in Fullerton. My dad was a fireman. Uh, we didn't really have that much God. We didn't have any church in our life. No, no church, no God in my life. Um, I don't remember much back then because uh, I was one to five years old. That was quite a few years ago. Uh, but uh, my, I know that my dad was kind of a partier. He he would go out and party sometimes. Sometimes he would go partying and and not come home. So that caused some problems in the house. Um, so. Uh, when I was about five years old, he decided that I uh, wanted to uh, change, his, change where he was, kind of uh, maybe change his, what, what he was doing. So he decided to, that he would take us all up and got a job as a fireman up at a Tascadero Fire Department, which is way up north, it's uh, right off the 101 above San Luis Obispo, about, uh, about a 10, 12 miles past San Luis Obispo. Uh, so I was from there, I was there from when I was five to nine years old. And again, not, not a lot of church and no God in our life. No, uh, no um, um, just a, a parents, a parent, good parents. My, my dad was a good guy. He just, he just um, was a little bit selfish. And, and my mom was great, but uh, we just didn't, didn't go to church or anything. Um, and uh, so about the, uh, when I was about nine years old, my parents, uh, I, they used to fight a lot. Uh, my, last couple of, my last couple of years in, when we were in Atascadero, my parents used to fight quite a bit. And um, uh, one time I remember quite well, I was in the shower. I was like, I was about nine years old. I was in the shower and they got a window that was facing the backyard. And I could hear them yelling at each other back there. For a nine-year-old, it's a little scary when you're, and you, feel, you actually, I actually heard some scuffling and stuff and heard some things fall. And, um, and it was a little scary for a nine-year-old to hear their parent, her parents back there uh, um, just arguing like that. 
So as it was about a couple months later, we, we moved uh, back without my dad. My mom uh, and dad got a divorce when I was about nine. Moved back to Anaheim. And uh, um, we moved close, kind of close to Disneyland over. It was a little off of a street called Haster over there, Haster and Catella. But, but it was right by Disneyland. It was probably less than a mile from Disneyland, less than a mile from the Anaheim Convention Center, and about a mile and a half from, from Anaheim Stadium. So as a kid, I just, we would ride our bikes over to Disneyland, um, spend a lot of time over there because we, we found all kinds of ways that we could sneak into Disneyland <laughs> and, um, and sneak into the, you know, when we, there would be car shows and, and RV shows over at Anaheim Convention Center, we'd, we'd know how to sneak into those and run around and play on all the RVs and the boats and everything else that were there. Um, and that was back when they had the A, B, C, D, E tickets over there at Disneyland. So we, we, we had it down there. You know, pe most people, a lot of people go to Disneyland are from out of town. So they just, when they're leaving, they're not going to come back for a while. They just throw their, their old tickets in the trash. And we would take, scour the trash cans out in front of the gate there and find some mostly A's, A tickets, a couple, a lot of B's, hardly any an E ticket. Um, but when we found one, and we hit the jackpot, so it, it was good. So then we'd go to our normal spot where we sneak in, and we go on, we go on on the rides that we had with our tickets. Um, so that was kind of fun. Um, but uh, about the time, I, so that that was we moved there when I was about nine. So when I was about fourteen, um, doing those things, we there was a uh, an event at uh, Anaheim Convention Center, and. Um, so my buddy said, hey, let's go to the Anna Convention Center. There's something going on. I, and I, th I thought it was a car show or something. We're going to sneak in again and hang out and have a good time. But it wasn't. It was an event. It was a Christian event. And I was like, what the heck's going on? We're, what are we here for? We're, we're, we're. So we go in. Uh, we hear speakers. We hear music. And, and uh, at the end, they do an altar call. And there was, there was thousands of people at this, at this event. I'm not even sure what it was. Uh, but we got called, we, we, they did an altar call, and I'm sitting in the seat, and a couple of friends, they decided to go up to, the, to, to accept Christ. And I didn't know what was going on. I, and another guy goes, yeah, they're going up front. Hey, let's go. And I thought maybe there was something going on up there that was, that was um, I had no idea it was like to, uh, to give your heart to Christ. Um, so we go up there, we're in the front. There's all kinds, of, there's a couple hundred people up there in front of the stage. So, so they didn't really do the prayer right there. What they said is everybody that is here go out that door and and then you'll you'll um, say the prayer and do that so we go out the door they, they kind of herd us into this big another big uh, convention room and uh, they had a bunch of chairs set up with these counselors at each one of these chairs so the, the, I think there was there was four of us so we sat there and, and we all accepted Christ right there at the uh, at the uh, Anaheim Convention Center um, but the I, I, one of the one of the things is, is that I, I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, when I left there, I, I really didn't change. I wasn't a different person because I was 14 years old. So, um, but I, I had, like I said before, I'd never had God in my life, never had church in my life. So I really didn't know what I was doing. I really didn't even hear, hear God that much before that time. Um, that's one of the things that I, I, I think about now a lot is that when, when you bring somebody to Christ or when you come to Christ, you... Um, you you uh, you just have to realize the significance of that. You know, there you're 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 in the Bible. It says you're you're born again. You're you're new in Christ. You're you have the Holy Spirit in you, and you're following Christ. And um, uh, I didn't I didn't really get it that, that I didn't get it at that time. It took me many years past that to to realize what I was doing. Um, so I. Like I said, now I, I think if when somebody comes to Christ, it seems like uh, there has to be, uh, back then I don't remember them telling me the significance of it. And maybe they did, because 40 years, 40 plus years ago was a long time ago. And uh, uh, God knows that over the last 40 years, I've killed a lot of brain cells uh, um, over the years. Uh, they say one, one beer kills like a thousand brain cells. You know, luckily we have trillions, so I think I have a... <laughs> I, I I I might have uh, might have billions left, but <laughs> but it, uh, so we need to um, we need to just know the significance of that because we're we're born again we're we're supposed to be transformed in Christ and we um, we need to and then after we accept Christ we need to walk 
the walk the walk, walk in Christ. And so many times I've seen people that accept Christ, but they just go down the same road they're on. They don't change the road, and that's what I did. I just stayed on the same road I was on, um, which wasn't a bad road at the time. I was just a kid growing up. Uh, but as I as as I progress progress through through my life, we'll 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 see some difference. Um, so after that moment, I, uh, I, uh, you know, went to high school, graduated from high school. I did a lot of sports. That probably kept me out of a lot of uh, different bad things. But uh, in in high school, because there was some groups in high school that weren't weren't uh, were uh, a little shaky, and uh, <laughs> and I was one of the jocks, one of the one of the sports guys. So, but then again, you know, all the sports guys weren't perfect either. You know, we. We did our pot smoking, we did our beer drinking, we'd go to a friend's house and his dad would have a kegger on tap in the back and, um, and we'd be playing pool, drinking beer with the, you know, in, in high school with his dad's beer and we'd, we'd try and cover it up because his, his dad drank, drank a lot and didn't, uh, didn't know, he probably, he, he figured it was him that drank it, so that was a good thing. <laughs> um, so, uh, was able to not do that much partying in high school because I was, I was doing a lot of sports. Um, so then moved on, from, graduated from high school, and that's kind of where my partying started. I, I really started partying heavily when I was about 19. Um, in, uh, in Arizona, I had a, fun, a buddy in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, lives there, still lives there now, and he's still a very good friend of mine. Um, he, uh, we would go visit him because the drinking age at that time in Arizona was 19. And that, that was so cool. We thought that was, that was great. The first time we went over there, we're thinking, this is awesome. So we drive it over there. The second we were going through Blythe on the 10 freeway, the second we crossed over the border, we pulled into the first liquor store just because we could buy a, a six pack of beer without having to get somebody to buy it for us. Um, so that, that was, so we spent a lot of time going over to Arizona and, and, and that. But the, again, the, the, the God part of me was not there. Um, although I had, thought that I accepted Christ when I was 14 years old, um, I wasn't living that life. Um, because along with that party in came girls and uh, maybe uh, we did, did some pot. Um, I kind of I kind of toyed with cocaine a little bit. Um, didn't stay with it that long. Luckily, I, I uh, was able to say no when the time came because I know a lot of people can get addicted to some of these things. Uh, cocaine was I, I, when I did it, I, I could under, totally understand why people can get addicted to cocaine. Because uh, my experience was like, wow, this is awesome. Um, but luckily I was able to say no, because my friend that I did it with before, I'm not even sure where he is now. He moved to Alaska. He was selling all, his, all of his equipment to, to keep up his cocaine habit. And luckily I, was a, not a, I, I, didn't, I didn't go that, down that road. Um, so through those partying years, uh, um, I, did, I was sin, I was just full of sin and, and I could feel a little bit of myself saying, you know, this isn't right. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go down the right road here. I gotta change my course. Uh, <clears throat> so when I was about 20, I was 21, almost 22, uh, right after high school, I had been taking classes cause I wanted to be a fireman as well. So I was taking classes. I was going through fire science classes. I was doing everything you needed to do to be a fireman. But I was, and I was working full time. Um, and I was also uh, partying. Um, uh, one of the things that kind of nudged me in the right direction is my full time job was with a, with a painting contractor. Um, and he was, a, he, was a, he was a Christian guy. He had been to, he was a helicopter pilot in Vietnam. He had been shot down. He had been, I mean, this guy had been through a ton. And he was an encouragement to me uh, in, in my walk, although I wasn't walking the walk, but he was somebody that kind of nudged me in the right direction. Um, so I'm kind of thankful for that. <clears throat> um, so 21 and a half or so, I'm thinking, okay, I gotta get with the program. So I, uh, I finished my classes, I went through the academy, and God bless me, because I got a job. Uh, at the end of my 22nd year of life, I was. It was December 14th, 1980. I was 22 years old. My birthday's New Year's Eve, so it was a couple years later, a couple weeks later, I turned 23. I started with the LA City Fire Department. And it was definitely a blessing because 
did I, I did I deserve it? Heck, no, I didn't deserve any of that. I, there's many things that that I'd been blessed with through my life that that I didn't deserve, and I'm sure that everybody here can can relate to that. So, um, a couple of years later, I, I met this girl, and uh, we uh, we dated for a couple of years. Although I was still partying with my friends once in a while, while I was still dating her. Uh, but I thought, okay, dating her for a while, I'm 24 years old, I guess it's time to get married. So I married her. And uh, we, had a pre- we, we, we did pretty well at the beginning. Uh, we had our, our issues, we had our, had our, our basic uh, young married problems, but uh, we ended up having those two kids. Uh, one's, like I said, one's 30, one's 32 now. We had those two kids. Well, about four years into the marriage, I, I totally blew it um, and uh, I cheated on her. So it was, uh, it was a changing moment in my life because I was ex- feeling extremely guilty. So it was changing my behavior at home. I thought that, you know, I, it, it was a couple times over about a month period of time. And I just, I couldn't handle the extreme guilt that I was feeling. So I, um, I ended the, my affair or whatever you want to call it, my cheating, and I said I was feeling this extreme guilt, so I said, okay, you know what, I, I got to get with the program here. I got to um, uh, get back to life. I figured I could just let it pass, go on with life, never cheat again, and it would go away. But it didn't go away. I, I was a, uh, My extreme guilt was causing me to, to um, be a different person at home. My, my behavior was different, so, and I couldn't I couldn't change my that. I tried to maintain, you know, like back years ago when we were driving drunk, everybody go, "Hey, maintain, maintain." When they see a cop or something, I couldn't. I couldn't maintain. I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, um, uh, um, just be the normal person that I had been. And finally, she came. She pretty much came up to me and said, "Hey, what's going on? You know, you're you're for months you've been uh, a certain way." And and, and so, um, so I. I I spilled my guts. I, I gave her the whole story. I told her everything. Uh, gave me a relief, but it it was just hurtful for the whole relationship. Um, so she um, it got rid of my guilt, but I uh, I mean to the extreme guilt. But I'm still feeling guilty for what I did because it was terrible. That's 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 not you know it's just something really bad. So I uh, she. Um, I thought she kind of, she pretty much, uh, I thought she forgave me. And at that moment, I, I thought she did. And I thought, okay, cool, I'm going on. I'm not going to do it again. Again, I didn't reach out to God at that point to, to, to change me, to really change me back to, to where the way I should be, should have been. I didn't reach out. We didn't go back. We didn't go to church. Um, and I, you know, I look back and I regret that I didn't use God's strength to get me through that time. But I didn't. I didn't cheat again. We were married for two more years, um, and I thought things were going good. I thought we were gonna we were gonna make it. And then she came up to me about two years later and said, "Hey, I'm I'm I want a divorce because I can't live with the fact that what you did a couple of years ago, cheating." Um, and she said, and she also said she found another guy. So um, so she left. Um, and this guy, another thing about this guy is he was a Mormon guy. So. Uh, my kids are getting dragged into a Mormon life because she ended up marrying this guy right after our divorce was final. Um, so right when we got a divorce, that's when I said, I, you know, I know I said it a few times through my life, hey, I got to get with the program. Well, it, again, I, gotta, I, I said, I, I got to get with it here. So um, I went back to church. I started going back to church um, in Irvine because I, I, most of my life I spent in Orange County. Went back to church. I started trying to get involved. Um, I was, uh, I mean, I, I would do a little bit of serving at the church um, and uh, go every Sunday. I'd go to some week, week, weekday uh, studies. I would, uh, I volunteered for, a, to get, they had a big 5 or 10K run at this church every year. It takes like six months to plan it because it's really big. I got on that committee. I just tried everything I could to but I still, I still wasn't reading the Bible. I still wasn't uh, praying as much as I should. I was just outwardly, I was trying to, to get, uh, I get approval, I guess. Um, so um, that just, uh, 
that really didn't work. But uh, but I kept going to church for the and so for the next nine years I was a single guy. I stayed single because I I didn't want. I felt like I wasn't able. I felt inadequate to be a husband at the time because I figured for what I did I I thought maybe that down the road I I might do the same thing, and I, I didn't want to repeat that. So I stayed single. Um, but I I dated during the time. Um, And all of my, all of my dating, I, my, I, I was, I wanted to get married again. I, I, I wanted to be a married guy. I wanted to live happily ever after, like a lot of us do. Um, so, I started dating, and I would date people for three to eight months or so, and then, and in that time, you know, I would evaluate my life with them and, and to, to, to uh, maybe get married to them, and that, that went on for nine years. Um, but I was sinning the whole time, during that time, because I was. Uh, you know, there was sexual sin on every one of those relationships that I had because we were married. Um, so, and I was still doing a little party, and not as much as I did at 19 and 21 years old. But So I was about from when I was 30 to about 39 years old. Um, but I, I do, I have a little scripture here that I wanted to, to bring up um, about, about that part of, uh, where we go? Uh, excuse me, I'm, uh, okay, here it is. Okay, on Romans, and you guys have probably heard this before, but uh, I'll say it again. I, I read this scripture and I go, wow, that, that was me during those nine years. <clears throat> um, so it, it was uh, Romans 15 through 20. It's, uh, for I do not understand my own actions, for I do, do, I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. <clears throat> uh, let's see where it goes. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law. That is good. So now it is no longer I do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. There we go. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells in me. So, um, that, that kind of hit home with me when, during that period of time when I was, those nine years when I was single. Um, I, because I've been going back to church, I it was hitting me a lot harder when I was doing those those things, those sinning and the uh, sexual immorality and and some of the uh, once in a while the parties that I get drunk at. Um, those are uh, I, I would I would feel bad for that. And then I read that and it's like that that's that's kind of where I was. There's another verse here too that really hit me hard. It's a pretty short verse, but it's pretty powerful. Um, it's Proverbs 26:11, and it's. Uh, like a dog that returns to his vomit is a fool who repeats his folly. So I read that and I was like, I was repeating my folly over those nine years. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty, that, that's like a slap in the face, that, that verse right there. So uh, another thing during that time, during a lot of my time at the fire station too, um, I, I was like that undercover Christian. Um, lukewarm Christian, uh, the the uh, uh, fair weather Christian, however you want to put it, but I I I didn't want anybody to know that I was a Christian, because the fire station is a tough place to be. It's a, you know you get at the kitchen table with a bunch of guys, and it, there's it, there's no Christian talk at those at those tables unless everybody there is, is a Christian, but that's very seldom does that happen. I mean, they're talking about women. They're talking about what they did the night before. They're, they're it's just everything. And you're, you're, um, you just, you know, you kind of, you kind of listen to it. I mean, I didn't do any cussing at the fire station. A lot of guys do a lot of cussing. I didn't do cussing. I didn't tell any of the jokes that they were telling, but I would laugh at them um, because a lot of them were pretty funny. But they were pretty. They're, some of them they're pretty vulgar jokes as well. Um, so. Um, my actions weren't, I was just, I was with the guys. So my, my, uh, my, uh, 
uh, behavior and my actions didn't show me really much different than they were. And we're supposed to walk and be different so that we're, uh, people, can, <clears throat> people can see us and say, wow, that, there's something different about that guy. And um, I, I didn't do that. Although when I left the fire station, I would, go, I would do my church stuff. I would go to church, and, but then I would leave the church, and then I would go on a date that night and, 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 be, and sin that night. So um, it was just a, for those years, it was like a, a, a vicious circle kind of thing. One thing about those years is I really got close to my kids because I spent a whole lot of time with them. It was either kids or dating or, or work. That was my life. Um, and the dating part was actually the smaller part of all that. It was a really small part, but it was still a part it was a part of my life that I was doing my sinning. Um, so my kids and I, three of us, we'd go on vacations. We'd go, I'd, I'd coach their soccer teams. Um, um, and I would, uh, uh, if I can find that verse here, but there's, I would be, I would be this person that at, when I was coaching the soccer team, people would say, hey, you're, you know, you volunteer all the time. You're so good with your kids. You're good. And, um, but that was the other, that, that was the, the like the, the other me. The other, then I would leave. I drop my kids off at their mom, or if I had them for the weekend, I drop them off, and then I would go party or go on my dates. So that part of my life, nobody, nobody really saw it. I never really talked about it. Um, so as far as the the um, the not uh, wanting people to know as a Christian, there's a couple of verses here. Luke nine twenty six says, uh, "For whoever is ashamed of me." <coughs> And of my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed. <clears throat> that it just hurts me because um, during those during those years, I I I it it hurts that I didn't that I didn't show that God was in my life. Because of because you're you're. You're not, uh, God's so good to us, and we should be happy to, to show that, we're, that he's in our lives. <clears throat> okay, so another one was, uh, um, Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Um, we don't want to be, we don't want to be ashamed. We want to step out. It's, it's like, um, uh, stepping out to do something like this. I mean, th this is this is beyond what I ever thought I would be doing. Um, is you know standing up talking to you guys. <clears throat> and then there's another one, Second uh, Timothy one eight. It says, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in the suffering of the gospel by the power of God. That's when the uh, um, uh, Timothy's just talking to, to the to churches out there. But the main part of that is, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. Um, it's, it's, it's really strong that, that in, in my heart now that I, I want to get back on the right road and, and um, uh, just li live life for Christ. <clears throat> okay, that, that's that. Um, See how old was I? I'm 39. Okay. Um, so after that nine-year period of time, uh, I, I, I was dating and I thought, you know, this is not working. I, 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 I want to live that, live, live happily ever after, get married again. So I get into, this, I get into a dating service. That was in the mid-90s. Mid-90s, they didn't have dating services like they do now. This was a 25 by 25 room. And by the way, this thing cost me $1,500 for this dating service. Now they're like 49 bucks or something. Um, but you walk into a room that's like 25 by 25, and on every wall is rows of shelving with notebooks. And you'd see a notebook like uh, A, th A and B. And so you'd pull out the notebook, and th there'd be these... The, the one side was women, one side was men. So you pull out the notebook, big table in the middle, you sit down and you thumb through this uh, notebook looking for your next wife or your next girlfriend or whatever. It wasn't a Christian service, but you could tell them in, the, in your notes that you're a Christian. And, and I did in mine. So 
I'm thumbing through them and think, I'm thinking, this is crazy. I'll, I, you know, I'll be 70 years old by the time I get done looking at all these books. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm looking through a book, and I see, I see this, uh, this uh, woman that, that I eventually met and eventually married um, at that time. We're divorced now, but uh, so the service didn't work that well. Um, so I marry I marry her. That was about I was you know a little over forty I guess. And we we get married. She has a couple of kids. I got a couple of kids. My kids didn't live with us when we first got married, um, but uh, we moved to Mission Viejo over in down Orange County there. So uh, and at the time, my ex-wife was going through some some issues and she was hinting around that maybe she didn't want the kids to live with her anymore she didn't want to not have a relationship but she just might not want them to live so i went down and got the paperwork and they they came i got custody of my kids for their junior high and high school years and my daughter was was tough during those years so it's <laughs> so it's uh but it, it was a blessing to get them um so uh, during that, that, during our marriage, there was ups and downs, and uh, I would say there was probably more downs, but at the beginning, it, when, we, when I first uh, was going to get into this marriage, I really felt, I felt a tug not to, not to marry this woman, um, but I, I, and I actually prayed about it, but I didn't know which tug was, was me or which tug was God's, and w was God telling me not to, or was he telling me too and my and me uh, i was telling myself so it, it was a pretty confusing but bottom line i ended up doing it and now i look back and i think it was god telling me not to do it um so i think it was the wrong decision but god works even through bad decisions so the, during the 12 years i was working or i was married to her um she ended up coming to christ she ended up because uh, she wasn't a christian when i married her I didn't look for a Christian woman. I just looked for, you know, a uh, pretty face, nice body kind of thing. You know, I was still in that mode even at 40. I mean, like I was back at 21. Um, so she did come to Christ through uh, because I would take her to church. At that time, we were going to Saddleback Church. Went there for quite a few years. Um, took her to church. And it's, you know, big churches, they're... I think that maybe that's why I went to big churches a lot of my life because it's so it's easy to be an undercover Christian at those churches because you just blend into the thousands of people that go there and you can just sit in the back and um, nobody's holding you accountable um, that kind of thing so anyway we went to that church she ended up coming to Christ she ended up being a, a uh, uh, working in the kids ministry um, bringing some kids to Christ um, she, she worked well with a lot of the kids um, and now it, 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 it turned out later in the marriage that some of her family came to Christ as well. So God worked through that bad decision to bring, to bring uh, those other people to, to God, to Christ during that time. Um, but our marriage, it didn't last, it lasted 12 years. At the end of 12 years, um, my, uh, we got a divorce. And uh, that, you know, that, that was just another, uh, another thing that just set me way back. Um, because I was feeling like, kind of like a marriage failure at that time. I was feeling like kind of a marriage failure at that time. <clears throat> and um, and I didn't want to be a marriage. I wanted to live the happily ever after, like I've been saying. So I was about 52 about the time. And uh, during that time... Uh, I, uh, for a couple of years, I, I stayed single and I started dating again. I thought, wait a minute, I'm getting back into that same old mode that I did that during that nine years I was single and I didn't want to go there. So I tried another dating service, but this time it was called Christian Mingle. And I thought, okay, this, this, this should be the one. So we, uh, I meet uh, through Christian Mingle. Uh, I met my current wife and she's a beautiful Christian woman. <coughs> Um, and I, I do thank God for her because she's um, she's helped me in a lot of ways come closer to Christ. Um, so my life now is is a lot better. It's I'm following Christ. I'm I'm reading the Bible every day, and I and just to uh, the which brings us up to right now. 
Um, just to, to, to recap though, one of the most important things I found out in my life, um, which got me closer, which has only been in the last couple of years, is that once I started reading the Bible and, and uh, praying, <clears throat> we, I pray with my wife, we uh, read the Bible together. I, I had never done that before with, with anybody. So it's, it's just really, uh, it's so important because we, we grow so much by, by uh, reading the Bible. I can't, I can't even stress that enough. It's really changed my life reading the Bible and sitting down and actually and praying and, and uh, you know, kind of more or less like meditating just for, for a little bit of time, pray, meditate, read the Bible. It's been so uh, life-changing for me. And I kicked myself because I should have done that, you know, 30, 40 years ago, but I didn't. Um, so I would just encourage just to read the Bible. Make, make, it a, make it a habit. Make it a, uh, it doesn't have to be every day, but, but if, it, if it's a consistent time every week or a couple times a week or once a day, I try and do it once a day. Um, and, and I'm not patting myself on the back. This is just God that has been, tugging me in different ways to get come closer to him because through those years that I wasn't close to God um, I wasn't close because I wasn't being obedient I wasn't reading the Bible I wasn't praying so he wasn't blessing me he wasn't he was dragging me through mud here and there just to you know like just to, to show me the way and he brings people into our lives and he brings circumstances into our lives to change our hearts and get us on the right track which he's done quite a bit for me. Um, so with that, uh, that's, that's my story. That's my testimony. So uh, let's, let's have a little prayer. <clears throat> Father, thank you for these men. Thank you for this, this breakfast. Um, I just pray that, that uh, something that I, I said, something you said through me would, would resonate and, and, uh, um, be able to that these men could take this home and uh, and just use it in their lives to bring bring themselves closer to you and their their uh, friends and family just bring them all closer to you uh, and we pray these things in Jesus name amen <clears throat>